Welcome back to How to Cake It. I'm Yolanda, and this week I'm gonna cake a Cabbage Patch Kid. But not just any Cabbage Patch Kid. The kid that my VIP members voted I should make. Because here's the thing. I may have gone overboard in adopting too many of them. So thank you guys for helping me. Oh, oh, come on. She's so active. And thanks to Wicked Cool Toys for collaborating with us on this video. We are gonna be giving away 10 Cabbage Patch Kids, so keep watching to find out how you can win yours. But not any of my seven. <laughs> To make my Cabbage Patch Kid, I baked four pounds of my ultimate vanilla cake in four five inch round pans. I'm going to put two of the cakes aside for now and with the other two, I'm gonna cut each of them into two layers so that I have four layers of cake. So the kid I'm caking is Eva Layla. I love that she looks so much like me. Would you get a kid that looks just like you or would you get a kid that looks totally different? There's so many more styles to choose from. I couldn't decide. That's why I adopted one, two, three, four, five, six, seven kids. You know seven's my number. It is. Now I need Sir Squeeze to help me simple syrup these four layers of cake, and then I'm going to fill and stack them with Italian meringue buttercream. This part of the cake will become the body of my Cabbage Patch Kid, but before I start carving, I wanna chill it. The kitchen literally smells like a nursery right now because each Cabbage Patch Kid comes with this amazing baby powder scent. Ah! Mm. People do like smelling babies. Just breathing in all my babies. It's like a bouquet of kids. <laughs> Now I'm gonna move on to the other two cakes and instead of cutting them into two layers, I'm gonna cut them in half. And from these semicircles, I am going to carve my Cabbage Patch Kid's legs. You know, Eva Layla was kind enough to just take a nap beside me so I could have a look at her. Basically, I shaped her calves and foot uh, with one half of my round cake and then I carved her thigh with the other half. Once I'm happy with the shape of Eva's legs, I simple syrup them as well, and I'm going to let that soak in. In the meantime, I'm gonna take the cakes that I stacked out of the fridge and begin to carve the body. I laid a circle cutter on top because I know how big I need her neck to be, and I carved down from that circle I imprinted down the side. And I need to make sure that this body will be able to hold her head up. I'm happy with the shape of Eva's body and legs and now I'm going to crumb coat and chill them off. I'm planning to make Eva's head and arms out of sculpting rice cereal. Eva, your head is a little bigger than your body, so I wanna make sure that it's light enough and same with her arms. Now I'm ready to start forming Eva's head. I form her head, it's pretty much kind of like an oval, but let me tell you, my daughter Eva has excellent cheekbones. Look at her cheeks. Those are some prominent cheeks. They're very round cheekbones. <laughs> Twinsies. And um, she has a very prominent chin, mm -hmm. right? So I wanna make sure to include those when I sculpt her head. First, I sculpt the general shape of her head, and I, oops, <laughs> don't hold your kid like that. <laughs> Eva, sit still. <laughs> And in order to highlight her cheeks and her chin, I actually created them out of a little bit of sculpting rice cereal and then added them onto the face and smoothed them in. Now I need to form her arms. Whenever I make two of the same thing, I generally like doing them at the same time because you could sculpt one whole arm and then move on to the next one and think, how did I do that? So <laughs> once I'm happy with my head and my arms, I'm going to crumb coat and chill them as well. No need to simple syrup. Sir Squeeze is done for the day. Once the crumb coat is chilled, it is time to ice all of the parts of this cake. So I have Eva's body, legs, head, and arms. I'm gonna give them all a nice icing in Italian meringue butter.
I've colored some fondant the same color as Eva's skin tone. We need to add that to my skin, skin to flesh tone set of fondant. Eva. Just Eva? Just Eva, that's it. And I'm gonna cover all the parts of my cake with this fondant. To cover the body, I'm rolling the fondant nice and thin, and then I'm going to drape it over the body and smooth it. You might get some creasing down at the bottom, but the good news is Eva has clothes on. So don't fret about if it's not perfectly smoothed down at the bottom, we're gonna be covering that up. To cover her legs, I cover them one at a time, and I roll out some more of this flesh tone fondant, drape it over the leg, smooth it as much as I can. I also added her cute little like knee dimples. See them? She has like knee dimples, and she even has dimples on her ankle. So I added those with a sculpting tool, and then I carefully flip over her leg and lay it on a sponge and pull the fondant up around the back. So there will be a seam, but it will be underneath and no one will know. For her arms, I cover them the same way I covered the legs, even though they're Rice crispy. So I'm just draping the fondant over, making any indents I need to make, and then flipping it onto a sponge, drawing up all that excess fondant, trimming it away and smoothing it. And then I have to make sure to create indents for her fingers with a sculpting tool. Eva and I are matching today, as you can see. I wore this pink top on purpose because I was inspired by Eva's pink tea and because it's this month's Cake Tea Club tea. Now, if you're a member of our deluxe membership, not only do you get this tea, you get our Bake Me Happy Sprinkles, get it, and a cake scrap bag. Oh, I won't send you this bag because I already wrote my name on it. I'll send you a blank one. There is a link in the description below. Buttercream Dreamer. <laughs> that didn't work out. I should have known. Yes, please get me awkwardly bent over yeah, a stool. Another day. With my children that. on the floor. Here we go. Action. Buttercream Dreamer. <laughs> See how she has these cute little lips? I need to accentuate these lips on the face that I've sculpted before covering it. Because there's no seam in her lips. So what I did was I added like a little cord of fondant for her bottom lip, and then I created a little top lip. Well, she has this cute little dimple under her nose. I don't think it's a dimple. And so now what will happen is when I drape this whole head in fondant, I'll be able to accentuate her lips a bit better rather than trying to pinch the fondant and create them. Yeah. I'm, I'm representing you, Eva. Now, much like the body, I knew I would get some gathering um, just because of the 3D shape of the head. So what I did is I sort of draped more front forward, knowing that all the gathering would be at the back, which doesn't matter because Eva has some beautiful hair. I'm going to begin semi-assembling Eva on a cake board. Now I want to add her legs and I may need to trim them a bit. The good news is this will be hidden by her shorts, but I do have my circle cutters on hand, so this way I can get the legs up nice and smug, smug, smug. snug, <laughs> snug to her body. Now I need to add a dowel through the middle of the body that will help support Eva's head later. I want that dowel to at least be halfway inside her head. That sounds terrible. I know it sounds bad, but it won't hurt. Now I need to create Eva's shorts. Sounds easy, but they are covered in a lovely floral and heart pattern. So I rolled out all the colors in the pattern really nice and thin. And then I'm gonna use various heart shape and floral shape plunger cutters that I have to cut out various parts of the pattern. I had to improvise because the pattern is quite unique. So I used flower cutters I have, and then I altered them with other cutters. Now I'm going to roll out my navy blue fondant. That will be the base of her shorts. And then I'm gonna glue on this floral pattern onto the surface of the fondant. What's tricky here is I wanna mimic the pattern as best I can, but I also can't take so long that the fondant dries out. Because if it dries out, if it dries, if it dries out, if it dries out, when I try to wrap it around her as shorts, it will crack, 
and break, and I don't want that. At this point, I feel like I need to start putting her shorts in place. Um, it's really tricky because you'd like to think you could use fondant the same way you could use fabric, right? Like if I was wrapping fabric around her, I would just lay it there and tuck it in where I need and it would fold and crinkle, but fondant isn't really like that. If you get too many folds and crinkles, it will just start to crack and get an elephant skin. So I cut it into panels and added her shorts that way. Somehow I found it didn't quite meet up at the back, so I just used a strip to fill it in. We need Eva to wear a whole pair of shorts. <laughs> Eva, put your shorts on. I wanted to make marks on the cake uh, to indicate where I was gonna put the arms. So what I did is I used some oval cutters I had and I sort of indented the body to let me know where her arms would sit. Eva is wearing the cutest pink top. It's so adorable. And I have to figure out how to recreate this on the cake version of Eva. And I've decided to cover my cake in two panels. So like the front part of her top and the back part of her top. And now what I'm going to do is roll out some pink fondant. Then I held it up to the cake and figured out where the arms were marked. And I used that same oval cutter to cut the ovals out of the pink fondant. And I used a round cutter to cut the neck out. I used a 12 inch cake pan because I want to cut the bottom of the top so that it's rounded. The reason I do this is if you cut a straight line and then you wrap it around a cake, it can often look warped. So I want a natural roundness to flow around her body. Now I need to flip this piece of fondant over, brush it with a bit of piping gel, and glue it onto the front of Eva's body. I need to make sure that the armholes line up and that the neck lines up and wraps around. And then I'm going to cut a seam on both sides, right through the middle. Now I need to create the other side of Eva's shirt, the back part of her shirt, and I'm doing it in a similar manner. So again, that rounded bottom, cutting out the armholes, cutting out the neck hole, piping gel, and then I drape it around the back of the cake, and I'm gonna cut a seam to line up with the first seams I've already cut. I do wanna make the cute little tie on Eva's top. So for this, I use some sort of eye-shaped cutters. I cut two of those shapes and I rolled them a little bit thinner and then I folded them. And for the middle part of the knot, I just cut a couple of strips, overlapped them and wrapped them around. And then I glued this whole thing to the bottom left corner of her top. It's time to add Eva's arms, and I think they're just looking a little too big. Eva's been working out. Too many bicep curls, I feel, Eva. So, I removed the fondant from the arms, and I'm just gonna re-trim them a bit with a small serrated knife. Give it a quick crumb coat, a quick ice, and then I'm going to recover them. So everything I did before, I'm just doing the same thing again. Now that they're the right size, it's time to add Eva's arms to her body. There is one detail I need to add to the arms before I do that, and that is the stitch detail. Now if you watch this show, you know I'm really finicky about details. That's why I think it's important to include things like the overstitch wheel to mimic this look, to make my cake look as real as possible. And what I've always loved about this brand is that every Cabbage Patch Kid you adopt is different and unique just like you. Each one comes with its own birth certificate. No two are alike, so adopting one is special. Oh, wow. And only when you open it up do you know where they were born. And Eva was born on May 31st. Aww. So she's, she's pretty fresh. She's fresh. <laughs> awesome. Welcome. <laughs> I still have mine. Do you? Yep. That's so cool. <laughs> what was her name? Her name is Naomi, Gladys Naomi. <laughs> <laughs> That's her name. I also need to address the hem of, of her neckline of her top. So once again, cutting a strip of the pink fondant, using the overstitch wheel, and then wrapping it around and gluing it in place with piping gel. I'm going to work on Eva's face, because right now, she can't even look at me. I need to add her cute little button nose. I just rolled a little bit of the same color fondant, made a couple of indents, and then I glued it 
right in place on her face. For her ears, I rolled a ball of the same fondant, cut it exactly in half, and then I shaped her ears. They're kind of oval. I used a sculpting tool and my fingertip to just sort of indent and create a lobe, and then I trimmed away. If they get soft when you're doing this, put them aside, chill them before you add them, because the last thing you want is to warp them when you press them onto her face. For Eva's eyes, you know what? These kids have beautiful eyes. Like they have like, eye, it's not just a catch light. It's, a, it's above and beyond the catch light. I've rolled out some white and some black fondant. I cut out the shape of her eye. I cut out the shape of her pupil from black. And then I actually painted the detail on with a little bit of brown and white food coloring. But I want to make sure to leave the center nice and black. Eva, you know I think your eyes are beautiful. And so are Nevia Carla's eyes. Just wow. look at that. Like Violet. I want Violet eyes. That's why she's so happy. Look at her. She is really <laughs> She's happy. like, these are my eyes. <laughs> now I need to glue these eyes onto Eva's face. And don't forget these eyebrows and these lashes. And then, of course, the little catch light. Now it's time to make Eva's beautiful hair. I want to just create, I don't want to call it a toupee, but I don't know what else to call it. I want to create just a base for her hair. See what I'm saying? Yo! Oh, sorry, this is my, this is my kid. So, Eva, like that. Eva, may I lift your ponytail? I want to create the base for her head. And what I want to do is soften some of my black fondant with some vegetable shortening, put it into a clay extruder, and extrude really thin cords. And now I want to glue those cords to the surface of the hair base I made, because I want it to look like her hair was tied back in a pony. Now for her ponytail, Eva is my daughter. She has a lot of hair. See, Eva's hair is nice and light. Fondant is not that light. So I want to create a base ponytail. So it's just sort of one solid piece formed like a ponytail and glue it to the back of the cake. Let's talk about your headband. I really like it. I feel like I'm a bit too grown for this sort of headband. But if I were your age, if I were just born May 31st, I would totally wear it. I would rock this. So for the headband, I'm going to begin creating it similar to the way I created Eva shorts. I also need to add the stitch detail right down the middle of this headband. And then I'm going to cut out a band. Now I need to ruffle this band before I apply it to her head. What I do is line up some bamboo skewers and then I lay my strip of fondant over top of them so that the fondant sort of drapes over like this. I'm, I'm most definitely too old for this headband. Yeah. I don't think. <laughs> I always wanted bangs. Now I can apply it to Eva's head. I'm gonna use some piping gel to help me put it in place. Um, I feel like I could rock this visor. But the question, Elon, is would you go surfing wearing no. the visor? No. I also need to make the great tie. See how her headband ties like her shirt? Mm -hmm. So I'm just gonna recreate that the same way I did the shirt tie. Now that that's secure, I'm clay extruding more of the black fondant and I'm just gonna glue it onto the cake over that base so we see more strands. Do you wish you had your own Cabbage Patch Kid? Now is the chance to win one. We are doing a giveaway. Click the link in the description below and it will lead you to an Instagram post. On that post, you have to leave a comment answering this question. Where are all Cabbage Patch Kids born? Now make sure to hashtag your answer with Cabbage Patch Cakes. Now don't forget, the link is in the description. Click it, head over to my Instagram. Go, go, go. Eva, Eva, 10 more of your friends are gonna get adopted. My cake, much like Eva, has no shoes on. I'm gonna fix that, Eva. Eva's shoes are the same color as her top, so I'm rolling out two pieces, nice and thick. Before I cut out the shape of the shoe, I'm actually going to 
use Eva's shoes as embossers on my fondant. Because look, see how there's a little Cabbage Patch Kid logo in there? Oh, cool. Yeah. So I cut out the sole of the shoe to be the correct size, and then I line up the thicker part of the wedge with the with Eva's heels. And in the meantime, I'm going to roll a little bit more pink fondant, and that's what I will create the straps from. Now I can cut all of the strips from my extra rolled out fondant and wrap them around the shoe while it's on her foot. So Eva's blush is natural. It's just from like running around and playing and just the delight of her day. My blush is applied with a brush. <laughs> But so is my cake's blush. I apply the blush to the cake form of Eva with a soft brush. I'm using a powdered food coloring and I just want to lightly blush both her cheeks and just the tip of her nose. Hee -hee! Character cakes are not easy and they take so much time and they make me really nervous, especially when it's something everyone knows and loves, like Cabbage Patch Kids. But what do you think, yo? I think you did great. <laughs> I think I did Eva proud. Thank you again to Wicked Cool Toys for collaborating with us on this video. This has been a great episode. Who knew that one day I'd be caking one of my favorite toys on my very own YouTube channel? Who knew? Who knew? Who? Gladys Naomi did not know. <laughs> she did not. And neither did I. Make sure to check out my new compilation over on how to cake a step-by-step. -step. Cakes that went viral. Sounds like a bunch of cakes got like a bad disease. Yeah, no. I'm trying to be all like 2020 about this. You know what I mean? Yeah. Cakes that went viral.